In this video, I'm gonna be going through the different chicken predators and signs of attack and prevention. And stay tuned till the end because I'll be answering some frequently asked questions and I'll talk about how to protect against fisher cats, weasels, and meeks. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So, so just last week, my friend shared with me a little story. They noticed that their hens were clucking far away from the coop, not just one hen, multiple. They would also be idle by the coop, but not enter the run. A chicken predator during the day is not common in the area, but my friend went to go immediately check and sure enough a younger possum was feasting on their eggs now usually when spring comes around peak hunger is settling in on the predators and they will become more bolder and courageous as a backyard chicken keeper there may be nothing more horrifying than heading out to do your morning chores and finding the remains of a nighttime predator that succeeded in its mission you see feathers carcasses or injured birds or you fail to see chickens that should be there and are not there's something that may be more horrifying and than that scenario and that is watching helplessly while a predator takes off with your bird right in front of your eyes. So let's go ahead and dive into these different chicken predators and then we'll talk about what to do as a responsible chicken farmer, homesteader, hobbyist, whatever you are and how to protect them. Let's start off with the first chicken predator, dogs. Signs of a dog attack would be scattered feathers everywhere, potentially blood in the vicinity, chicken carcass laid somewhere close to the playing quarters of the dog, footprints, and you know, being a dog lover, myself, my natural inclination would be to take offense at this. My sweet, intelligent, obedient little mutt would never be a danger to my flock. Well, first off, using the word never when referring to the behavior of any animal is definitely looking for trouble. Dogs love the taste of chicken and are hunters by instinct. Mixing in any dog with chickens before being present during multiple interactions and proper introductions is a mistake. Even once your pet has passed the test, you still need to guard against stray or wandering neighborhood dogs who see and pounce and then take off with their prize before you can even register what just happened. Domestic dogs don't want to kill the chicken to eat in most cases. Instead, it wants something to play with. Part of playing involves pinning, biting, nipping. Our neighbors know their little Maltese can cause serious harm to our hens over here. Don't ask how we found out. The key to keeping dogs from getting into trouble and making trouble for you is for your pet, getting the animals acquainted while the dog is controlled on leash. The dog must know these birds are not for chasing and not eating. If this desensitizing is unsuccessful, a physical barrier or an electric dog fence might be your only option. Neighbors, dogs, and strays are more challenging to control, so any sign of repeated dog interest in your flock must be discouraged by a physical barrier around the chickens for example a chicken run of sorts unfortunately just because you ought to be able to let your flock free range on your property doesn't mean your neighbor's dogs will allow it it's important to mention that i have many friends and i agree that having an outdoor dog is one of the best predator deterrents a dog can be your one-stop solution for predator prevention with proper training all right the next predator on the list are coyotes and wolves coyotes and wolves will always take their prey signs of coyote or a wolf attack are scattered feathers everywhere potentially blood and chicken carcass missing and some footprints. Coyotes are native to North America, mainly in Alaska, but they are also seen less widely spread in the continental U.S. Like the domesticated dog, both of these canines have a reasonable fear of humans, so hanging out in your backyard is not typically their first choice. More and more, as they are pushed out of their habitats, though, coyotes especially are showing up hungry in suburban and urban areas, and so not only will they go after your chickens, but domestic pets as well. Much like dogs, these canines are equipped with strong jaws, sharp teeth, and paws that can dig a fine hole under fencing. For this reason, a tall and sturdy fence with an apron or buried bottom is an essential deterrent against attacks. Hungry coyotes have been known to jump as high as six feet into a chicken run, so an extra few feet of height goes a long way in fencing in your flock. Just as, or even more important, make sure your run is covered. Even something as simple as bird netting will help against attack jumpers of any kind. It will also help defend against attacks from our next predator on the list, birds of prey. So, signs of bird of prey attacks. Chicken carcass is usually close to an area of an attack. There's a centralized wound and there's tiny scattered feathers. Because most predatory birds such as eagles, hawks, and owls hunt chickens in the same fashion, the way to defend against their attacks are also very similar. So I'll lump them all together here in one category. A free-range chicken farmer's nightmare. Birds of prey commonly strike chickens wandering about too far away from the coop for protection. Although they are only physically able to make off with one bird at a time, they will come back to the scene with the crime again and again if this food source is available undefended. 
probably the most common strike is from a red-tailed or cooper's hawk who often stake out unprotected flocks ahead of time. Perched in a nearby tree or on a power line, they wait for the optimal time and the optimal bird to pick off. Once one of these predators has its mind set on swooping down for dinner, it may not care who's around to watch. Many times, hawks and eagles will fly right in front of a human, grab a hen, and fly off despite any attempt to scare it away. I have seen this personally by a red-tailed hawk, though I have not seen this hawk around much since then. Owls are different only because they hunt at night. Chickens not secured in a coop are primarily at risk of being preyed upon. One of my friends saw free-range chickens as the most healthy and happy option available for their small flock until that was. They noticed hawks in the vicinity in a near miss with one of their older and slower hens. After that, an enclosed and covered chicken run was going to have to do for their flock. A dead chicken is neither healthy nor happy, and an uncovered run or just a wandering flock is more likely to, to attract these birds of prey and put a tragic end to unlimited free-range freedom. My friends, by the way, ended up purchasing bird netting and making a more giant chicken run. As is the case with dogs and wolves, killing birds of prey is illegal in the U.S. This furthers the theory that for chicken safety, a good defense is the best offense. Nature always has a balance. Please remember to respect the wildlife surrounding your chickens. All right, the next one on the list is the red fox. But let's talk about the possible signs of a fox attack. What you'll see is feathers and footprints, sometimes a faint odor resembling not as strong as a skunk, but still may be noticeable. They're also infamous for their love of chickens and lack of natural predators. These red foxes are more likely to strike in urban and suburban areas rather than rural. For this reason, small urban coops need to be protected from the top, bottom, and perimeter. Protection against foxes, no matter where you live, requires a comprehensive defense. These beautiful creatures are also resourceful, strong, and very clever, as the cliche suggests. They can dig under and climb over inadequate fencing and find a squeeze through gaps in housing. Protecting against fox attacks should include a fence at least five or six feet high and a buried or apron bottom to deter a digger. Chicken wire is somewhat useless with foxes because of its ability to chew through thin metal. Once inside the inadequate fence or unsound coop, foxes often kill multiple birds at once and will bury some for later. All right, the next one on the list is the possum. Let's talk about these signs that you would see if it was a possum that attacked your chickens. You would see feathers and footprints, evidence of a strong struggle, a wounded chicken, but surviving or missing or cracked eggs. Possums are primarily scavengers and don't prefer to work hard for their meals. They will target chicks, eggs, and adult chickens that are within easy reach, such as chickens that are roosting low for the night. Possums are not good diggers, nor as clever as fox or dog, but they are skilled climbers. Prevention from a hungry possum attack would include a covered run and a decently secure coop at nighttime. They will usually go for eggs over anything else. Many people leave scrap outside the run and keep them scavenging instead of attacking their hens. Many times chickens actually survive a possum attack. Now the next one on the list actually might surprise you and that is the skunk. As far as the signs for a skunk attack, you would see feathers and footprints and a parent struggle just like the possum and a wounded chicken again. They may have survived and missing or cracked eggs. But the most apparent sign that you wouldn't necessarily see but you would smell is the skunk odor. As with possums, skunks are more scavengers than hunters of chicken. They are however very interested in chicken eggs and have been known to pluck eggs or chicks right from under a hen sitting in her box. Unlike possums, skunks are more diggers than climbers. A sturdy fence with a ground apron will prevent it or at least deter skunk tunneling. Checking your existing fence for holes is also very important for skunk defense as they are lovely wrigglers and will fit into tiny, tiny spaces. A skunk problem around your coop might present a more significant issue of how to remove it without getting blasted with odor. A live trap and a relocation strategy would be your best bet, provided you first check that your local laws do not prohibit trapping and relocating. You should also be aware of ways to remove the spray that you will surely come into contact with as you attempt the strategy. Another tactic may be more attractive than trapping is to leave meals for visiting and hungry skunks towards the perimeter of your property. An easy dinner rather than one they need to work for might be more attractive for skunks as well as possums and other scavengers. All right, the next one on the list is the raccoon. But before I get into that, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg-laying chicken breeds. All right, as far as the the signs of a raccoon attack. You would see something similar to an opossum would be feathers and footprints and apparent struggle. However, raccoons are usually more successful in actually killing the chickens. So you would actually probably find multiply brutally killed chickens, missing neck and chest regions and a dead chicken carcass present. Unlike other animals who are fond of digging under, hopping over or finding holes in coops or fencing, raccoons have the added vex of being able to manipulate latches and move obstacles aside to reach your chickens. They also have been known to reach through fences and grab unsuspecting chickens without even bothering to make their way inside the coops or fencing. Raccoons are also somewhat wasteful after getting hold of a chicken. Often they will consume the neck and chest area of a chicken. 
then leave the rest of the carcass to pursue round two, the next chicken. Aside from the usual precautions already mentioned, using tighter weave gauge wire or hardware cloth around the run will prevent a raccoon from a reach in and grab attack on your flock. Also because the raccoon's ability to undo latches and open doors, a door latch that requires pointed manipulation is a good idea. Finally, the topmost area of the chicken coop needs to be secure with no holes or gaps between roofs and walls, lest these skilled climbers can enter as they scale even the tallest of pens. Besides trapping a live raccoon you have seen lurking, again, you must research local laws to assure that you can trap and relocate in your area. Attacks may further be prevented by a barking dog, a predator, including dog urine around the vicinity, and of course a secure coop and run with no holes or gaps. Now let's get into the last group of predators, the fisher cat, weasels, and minks. As far as the signs of a fisher cat, mink, or weasel attack, you would see something like feathers and footprints, apparent struggle, multiple brutally killed chickens similar to a raccoon, missing chest and neck reasons, and a dead carcass probably somewhere. So very similar to the raccoon. Weasels, fisher cats, and minks are just some of the 55 species in the family Mustelidae, which is commonly referred to as the weasel family. The weasel I'm discussing here is expected in the North US and Canada. Still, the family is carnivorous and chances are no matter where you go in the Western Hemisphere, you'll be in territory of at least one of the species with similar attributes. So it's essential to identify the type of animal in the weasel family that may be endemic to your area because although carnivorous, not all species in this family hunt chickens. Weasels are particularly fond of entering coops at night and wiping out every single chicken inside. The horror scene of opening the door to your coop and seeing carcass after carcass of dead but intact chickens is one you won't soon forget. Weasels prefer killing by neck biting, but there is a, a misconception that weasels suck blood of their prey and that's not the case. The idea came from the fact that the snout of weasels after killing their prey is covered with blood. These are animals you would really like to stay away entirely from your birds. Make sure to protect your chickens from measles, fisher cats, and minks through means of checking the coop top to bottom for holes or gaps that the weasels can capitalize on. The galvanized wire may also be a good option for coops that have a gap between the roof and the walls and also a good deterrent for digging predators, and this includes weasels, is adding a coop floor. So let's answer some possible questions that you may have. Now, why do foxes kill chickens? Well, first off, foxes will eat chickens, so chickens are their prey. So secondly, foxes are opportunist hunters. If the prey is large enough, the fox will kill it and leave it only to return and find a place to put it. Foxes are not only in rural areas, is. They are also prominent in urban environments. Like I said, urban environments do not deter foxes at all, and they are still a problem because they will kill chickens quickly and fiercely. You may also ask, how do skunks kill chickens? Skunks almost always attack the head by tearing out the throat and neck of the chicken. It's a brutal way to go, but this is how skunks kill their chicken prey quickly. The opportunity presents itself. Skunks will also steal chicken eggs and chicks if around. Now, you also may ask, what animal bites heads off of chickens? Believe it or not, it's usually raccoons that will rip the head off of chickens chickens. This happens when they try and grab through a fence and can only happen when they get the head through and not the rest of the chickens. Owls and weasels will also bite chickens heads off as well. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to check out this one over here. That's going to do it for us at the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.